Hello and welcome to the OC Varsity Gridiron Extra Show. This is our second round playoff preview. Well, we're talking about the first round and uh, surprises that we thought what was going on. I'm your host, Jonathan Camus. To my left is Dan Albano. To my right is Steve Fryer. We're here at Catella High School in the weight room where the Knights are getting ready for their second round matchup against Canyon. Dan, first round matchups. The first round's already in the books. What surprised you? What was notable coming out of that first round? Well, my biggest uh, picks and my biggest surprises that I was in, uh, that I made in the boldness of my picks was uh, Los Alamitos. They were my sleeper, and I went with my feeling on uh, Los Al to make it to the semifinals of the West Valley Division. And uh, they uh, did not win. Bracket they, busted. They, they, bracket buster. They lost in the semi uh, in the first round uh, out at uh, Chino Hills. But you know they were up uh, by about 15 points in, the, in uh, late in the first half. And and Coach Barnes says they gave it away. It was a tough year for the Griffins. Uh, a rare losing season. But I really thought Losau would kind of get it together, um, pull that upset. You know. But it's tough to do that in the playoffs when you're playing these league champions, teams that have been winning so much. Teams like Catella. That's what's going to be so hard for for Canyon. You got these teams that are just on a roll that are doing everything right all season long you, you, it's hard just to turn the uh, the switch on and that's what I was thinking Los Al could do um, and I was a little you know and that really surprised me too because the Sunset League goes 0-3 and, and they're out of the West Valley and that's actually the second year in a row in the West Valley division the Sunset League has gone 0-3 so they're 0-6 in two years that's a little bit surprising to me because those are great coaches and uh, some, you know, really proud programs. Maybe they, if they had your son's sword, it would have been some kind of inspiration, Dad. All right, Steve, we'll, we'll move on to uh, your, your opinions about the first round and what you thought surprised you, anything notable. For me, at least, it was Sonora. I didn't know they were yeah. that good. And Jacob Fimbres, I did not know he was that type of athlete. Steve, your, your yeah. overall thoughts of the first round. Well, I agree with that, too. I, you know, I, I had a, like a pick em game. I was, my, my predictions bracket, I wrote down Tustin, scratch it off, then Sonora, and I scratched it off, and I went with Tustin, you know, because it was like a, a coin flip game to me. But, you know, they won by 30-something like points, 35 points, jeepers. I didn't see that one coming. So, yeah, and then Godina's beating Westminster kind of threw me, too. I didn't see that one coming, too. I thought Westminster was pretty good. You know, they beat Garden Grove back in August. Pretty good team, you know, not a bad league. And, uh, and, and so they, uh, losing to Godinez, but what, Brian Ibotta, the quarterback over there, you know, ran for 400-some-odd yards and threw for another 100-something. And so uh, Godinez, that impressed me a lot. It was pretty fun to see Santa Ana High School, uh, the Santa Ana schools. we got three uh, Santa Ana schools that have, uh, have advanced. That's a, that's a lot of fun for the, for the city. So that's pretty cool there, too. Um, you know, you're talking about Edison getting beat uh, by Rancho Cucamama. That threw me, too, Dan, uh, also. But, you know, Edison's had so many injuries. I mean, nine senior starters out, 14 captains didn't dress. Yeah. That, that, that's a hard thing to overcome, even though as, ta as, as talented as those young guys are. Uh, Los Alamitos, gee, last 10 first round games, Los Al's lost nine of them. Yeah. They're, they're one in nine in the playoffs in the la in the, over the last few years. That's, that's just wild to me. And, and they had a lot of injuries too. But I thought with the quarterback, Talenko, when you can throw the ball in the playoffs, man, that gives you a big advantage. I thought, I thought uh, even though I did pick Chino Hills to win that game, I thought maybe Los Al could get through, but it didn't happen. Then you know what's going to happen too is I I predict that the playoff structure is actually going to change next year, where you're going to have go they're going to, the CIF is going to go to a competitive equity model, where uh, leagues uh, teams from the same league will be split up in the playoffs. So these the the the, the woes of the the Sunset League, where they're 0 and 6 in the the West Valley. They probably won't be in the West Valley Division next year. They'll probably be spread out, and uh, they'll get some relief. Yeah, Steve, you weren't here with us last week, but we talked about possible playoff changes to sure. come. I know you wrote about it. You pretty much agree with Dan's sentiments that these league teams are probably on the way out, so we don't yeah. see you know a Lakewood getting crushed when they're lumped yeah. in with Polly and so forth. The only, the only thing that I, I don't I, I like the competitive equity model. The only thing I don't like about it is uh, I think you're going to have like a, a, the Division One, so to speak. It's going to be a ton of private schools. And like two public schools in there, and those two public schools are going to feel like they don't fit. They're going to, they're, they're not going to dig it. I'm specifically thinking maybe a Mission Viejo. You know, I know they get a lot of transfers and stuff like that, right. but I think there's, I think there's still, you know, mm -hmm. such a, a, a difference between public schools and private schools in terms of what they can do athletically. You know, stipends, the, you, know, you know, enrollment boundaries, lots of things like that are different, and uh, you know, a emphasis on things are different. Uh, fundraising different so I think there's a lot of differences and, and I don't I don't want to see you know some some like that almost do it, it, the open division of basketball sort of you have like you know 14 
really high basketball academy sort of schools. And then you got a couple of public schools thrown in there. It's, it's kind of tough. But the, one of the good things that can happen when, if you when you if you run into that disparity, it will be very short lived because I believe the uh, the divisions will be a change. I think every year. Yeah. So they'll do it at a, a probably a yearly basis. So if Mission gets up uh, to that open division and they have a tough go, they'll get them. They'll get them the relief they need and get them properly, uh, more properly placed. All right, we'll see what happens. I don't envy the CIF officials and anyone else who has to draw up all those scenarios because it's a lose-lose situation. Our thanks to Dan Albano, thanks to Steve Fryer, and for all your latest football information, check out ocvarsity.com where we've got you covered. Watch out, Dan, swinging his sword. <laughs>